Hello, being as this is the first episode, happy 2023. Welcome to Convos with Nifa. I am Hanifa Kut, your host. And this episode, I have included different voices, different youth voices from an event I attended last year, the Youth Environmental Assembly. Unfortunately, I was not able to upload them last year, but still going through my drafts and my records, I got them and that is what I'll be sharing with you. I do hope that you will enjoy the given episode and get to learn and know what different youth are doing in the community and in our society to better the world. We'll focus on four different people from three different countries. With me, I'll be having a conversation. Okay, I had a conversation which I'll be sharing in uh, audio form. Unfortunately, these ones were done in audio form. And uh, the first one will be by Maurice Ngaria from Kenya, who brings us up to speed on a story of resilience to push for the agenda we want and to ensure that we achieve what we want and the target that we need. So, Maurice, tell us about yourself, the organization you're in and what you do. Uh, my name is Maurice Ngaroya. I'm a youth leader from Muranga County, former deputy youth governor, mm-hmm. former Murago Youth Senate representative in Youth Senate Kenya. I'm 22 years old. And I have a foundation called Munga Zatosha Youth Foundation. And we basically deal with talent and the environment. Under your organization, what have you done at the ground level? Which types of changes have you seen? And did you encounter any challenges along the way? Of course, <clears throat> my organization was born from necessity. Mm-hmm. So when COVID came, there was lockdown. Mm-hmm. And um, in my home area, there is a slum called Madare. So this slum is just made up of women that come to Nairobi and thicker to sell their bodies. But because of the lockdown, they couldn't really travel. Okay. So they were starving. And mm-hmm. this was a conversation that the church never wanted to hear. Yeah. So what we did, we, me and my friends, uh, because I'm a youth, church youth leader too, mm-hmm. so I used that mechanism to reach out to all the churches. And mm-hmm. I sat down with them and we discussed, we said, this is what we need to do. Mm-hmm. So we went and approached the former assistant county commissioner, mm-hmm. Mr. Alex Mukindia, my mentor, mm-hmm. and he chased us away. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Did you give up? No. Uh-huh. So I, I, first of all, I went alone. Mm-hmm. First, he chased me away. Mm-hmm. So I figured out if I go with the team and he chases us away, mm-hmm. we'll just have a simple demonstration. Okay. So the next time I went with the team, he was like, yo, I, I, I. I don't know what you guys are doing because we had said we want to help the needy, we want to build them houses. Mm-hmm. He really didn't, he, we also didn't know what we were saying actually. <laughs> <laughs> so a key point first yeah. of all to pick from this, if the youth want to engage and they want to do something and go for something, mm-hmm. they should have information, they should have facts and they should know what they're talking about. And huh. what they should know is where they're headed. Okay, so... Um, you need to know where you're heading. Yeah. You can know where you're heading to, but you don't know what to do. How yeah. do you go about that? I think mm-hmm. most of these things about impacting the community, they mm-hmm. are not born out of our minds. Okay. They are brought by God. It's we we wow. we are just <laughs> we're just there to connect the the dots. The, the dots. Uh-huh. So whenever you have an idea about impacting the community, this is, I'm speaking directly to that youth. Eh? Yeah. I'm saying is whatever idea you have, mm-hmm. don't look at where you are, your mm-hmm. financial situation. Mm-hmm. Just trust that this is God's plan, uh-huh. and I was the missing piece. Wow! That that, that that's the only <laughs> thing. You, you gotta, preaching? <laughs> no, no, no. You just, you just gotta know mm-hmm. you you are the missing piece. Mm-hmm. So that's all we believed in. We, we mm-hmm. wanted to build houses. We wanted to give them food. We, yeah, we didn't know how, <laughs> mm-hmm. but we wrote a very beautiful request, mm-hmm. and uh, the deal now took us down and told us, you know what, this request of yours is not, um, is not convincing. So, mm-hmm. so he dictated us. He mm-hmm. dictated another proposal, okay. word for word, mm-hmm. based on what we wanted to do. Okay. And after we did that, uh, we we went home. Mm-hmm. And then we were like, oh, 
we, we haven't achieved anything <laughs> so uh-huh. I, I i shared with my dad mm-hmm. the idea mm-hmm. and my dad was like you know like i i, I don't know what you're doing mm-hmm. because you're 19 years old aha uh-huh. by then you're just 19 yeah. you're 19 mm-hmm. but i have an idea mm-hmm. just do this mm-hmm. just collect your members mm-hmm. take them to town mm-hmm. let them just teach about covid okay someone will see Okay. And now that you sent your documents to various offices, mm-hmm. they'll be like they will put a face to to to, to yeah. their request. A key point. Mm. Anything that people are doing, it's important to document and also show what you're actually doing because if you put it down on paper yeah. and there's no evidence on what is being done, if people don't know what you're actually doing and you've not documented it, no one will be there to assist you or to show exactly. that you have evidence you're doing something no one will believe you yeah they will just see as a scum mm-hmm. so yeah we went to the ground mm-hmm. so we were like oh can we just the first day we went mm-hmm. we went back home no change the second day we woke up and my dad told me oh what how what, how, what went on yesterday I was like yeah we just went mm-hmm. and it just ended we came back home <laughs> and and he was like okay try try making liquid soap mm-hmm. as you teach people you give them for free okay so he gave me money mm-hmm. i went to my members to kachanga ingina mm-hmm. we made i think that day we made 100 liters of liquid soap so uh-huh. so we went in every shop teaching them And then now when we were before even we went we sat down we were like after we have teach we have taught them mm-hmm. and uh, we have given them soap mm-hmm. what about our next move okay so we decided we will have a form a contribution form mm-hmm. after we teach them about covid we give them soap mm-hmm. we tell them we want mm-hmm. to give out food mm-hmm. we want to build houses but we don't have funds funds so that's what we did mm-hmm. we went the whole town and uh, at the end of the day we gave out soap mm-hmm. and we collected uh, 5000 mm-hmm. improvements yeah so i went back home i was very excited mm-hmm. i was like yeah i made it and then now my nah, dad no like, my dad Dude. told me uh, i want you to go to a wholesale mm-hmm. and look at the prices <laughs> yeah and then you come back and tell me mm-hmm. whether you've made a, a step a step okay long story short I'm sure in the end you guys managed to do what yeah, you wanted yeah, yeah. to do after long, a lot of struggle. Long story short. Uh-huh. Um people had what we were doing because we were consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh that time schools were closed so the, the owners of the schools started donating food to us. Mm-hmm. The churches started donating food to us. Mm-hmm. We had targeted uh, around 40 homesteads by then. Mm-hmm. but we had a lot of food that now we had to sit down and strategize on <laughs> how to distribute, <laughs> how to distribute it again. we even now had to even make committees mm-hmm. to the ward level mm-hmm. because the food we we give 300 families food mm-hmm. for a period of 6 months oh nice and then we build a house for a needy person in a family there in Shagaki mm-hmm. and then yeah the journey continues mm-hmm. we 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 all went back to school uh, mm-hmm. and then we came back Mm-hmm. there was a problem on garbage so okay. we were going to the governor back and forth engaging here here and there yeah it was not fruitful so we decided to to create cleanups yeah so yeah three different towns cleanups yeah and we were not there the arrangers were not there mm-hmm. the organizers were yeah. not there but the mm-hmm. cleanup happened yeah, the cleanup happened mm-hmm. actually we were there we were we were the ones who reported the cleanups to the governor <laughs> strategy it's called strategy and we were mm-hmm. we were we were sympathizing with him we were telling oh. him how the youths were nachoma it is not good yeah. they even have media mm-hmm. and we were there telling him i think mm-hmm. what you need to do is send some people mm-hmm. they give them milk and 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 and, and, and bread mm-hmm. so that they so can, that they can they, have they, energy to they, clean they, the no, place even the media can see uh-huh. there is some good relation between you and Um, and the youth oh lord <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately that's what he, he did fortunately yeah fortunately as unfortunately for, for him. him yeah but, but fortunately for, for us what youth. that was the what that was our biggest challenge because we had mobilized 600 youths and we didn't yeah, know what they were going to, to eat, eat. <laughs> yeah wow that's wonderful because i was starting to wonder 
how um, community development initiatives moved to environmental issues. But um, what I can get from this is that all these are interrelated. You can't develop the community if the environmental aspect is down. And if the environmental aspect is off, the yeah. community cannot live sustainably. Actually, yeah, and also mm. uh, environment, mm. issues affecting the environment affect the community. Mm -hmm. So when you project yourself as a, as a person who gives solutions to the problems in the community, mm -hmm. the community itself will approach, will approach you to solve mm. environmental wow, problems. Wow, nice. So by you guys having activities and involving the community, um, you've had solutions from the community yeah. and the community has also embraced your activities, right? Yeah. Yeah, and by the communities embracing your activities, what are you currently doing on the issues to do with garbage collection? Uh, we, we are collecting garbage in the homesteads. Mm -hmm. That's what we wanted. <laughs> because people are dumping mm -hmm. uh, in conventional dumping sites mm -hmm. but now we wanted to create a business okay and the people who have been given contracts to collect garbage mm -hmm. were, were friends of the governor mm -hmm. so it was quite difficult for the governor to engage in that topic okay so we had to have cleanups the media to come mm -hmm. and uh, we have people in the mid in the in the ground proposing yeah. that uh, the youths need to be given yeah. a chance to be collecting yeah so yeah because we were not there we were not part of the cleanup according to the governor we, we were the ones who proposed the governor we told them now now mm. that the, the media already knows that there is a bad image yeah you need to see Let the ground the yeah seed, seed some ground for yeah for them. which is good because so, i'm sure if the youth are engaged in garbage collection yeah it has actually assisted in uh tackling issues to do with economic empowerment. Uh, true, true, true. And, uh, and from this, um, what is important is persistence. If you believe in something and you go for it, have a way to do it and don't give up along the way because you're facing obstacles. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. that is from me, Hanifa, and... And uh, Morris, and one last sentence <laughs> is whenever mm -hmm. you find yourself Mm -hmm. asking something from god mm -hmm. always be sure he will use another human to fulfill it wow so whenever another person is praying a prayer mm -hmm. to ask something from god mm -hmm. always be ready to be used by god to fulfill his wishes preach mr amen amen right. <laughs> richard mate talks on his youth-led organization and the different things that they do to actually ensure community development. And during that conversation, you get to know that and see how different SDGs are integrated to actually lead and push for community development. This is Hanifa and I am here with Richard Mate from Ghana. Oh, nice, Richard. Um, can you please tell me what you do, which organization you're from? and uh, what motivated you to start that organization or do what you do in that organization yeah so as i mentioned my name is richard mate with the alliance for empire rural communities in ghana alliance for empire rural communities is a local based NGO that focuses on empowering young people and local communities to develop innovative solutions to address their development challenges mm -hmm. the issue behind it was uh, because um, young people and most rural communities mm -hmm. always rely on our national state government to provide um, the infrastructure, the roads, the schools and everything that we need. Mm -hmm. But looking to ourselves as young people, as local communities, as rural communities, we have resources that when we put all together, we harness them. It can help us to address these challenges that we rely on our government to do for us or solve for us that takes years or almost it's not happening yeah so that was the motivation behind setting up the alliance for empire rural communities wow nice so so far which project have you embarked on so first of all we have the clean the climate 
friendly clean cooking project that seeks to provide a cook stove innovation to address the household air pollution that mm. the women face in cooking and also to address the deforestation problem we have in our rural communities wow. by encouraging them to set up sustainable woodlot systems which will be used as wood fuels in the communities rather than touching the natural forests. Oh, nice. So in the setting up or asking people to adopt this means of clean cooking, um, which challenges have you faced so far and what have you tried to do about it? Yeah, so number one issue in driving um, improved cook stove technologies in rural communities is finance. They always complain about the expensive nature of these improved cook stoves because they are mostly imported. Yes, yeah, so what we have is a very small cook stove implant which is very, very cheap, as, as cheap as just $5. Mm -hmm. And then we sell it to this rural community uh, um, women mm -hmm. that they put in their traditional stove. So they, they don't do away with their traditional stove, but just put in the cook stove implant to enhance mm -hmm. their cooking. Okay. So um, I know $5 to some people is affordable. But five dollars to someone in the rural area, in the interior, local level, might not be affordable. Do you have any payment scheme that scheme that makes it easier for them? Yes, we wanted to develop um, a, a, a village savings and loan schemes, mm -hmm. but we realized that five dollars is very little in the Ghanaian currency. Oh, uh, yes. So what we do, we did is that we reach out to. Um, middle income people to mm -hmm. companies, private companies mm -hmm. um, that can pay buy about 10 or 20 or 100 mm -hmm. of these um, $5 cook stove implants mm -hmm. and then we distribute to these rural women. Okay, wow. So um, finally, what's, what, what can you say has been the intake like what percentage is adapting to this and are you seeing any change in that sector so far yes um so when we develop the uh, cook stove implants we use these rural women to test it and we we tested it for three years wow. as we were testing we were also mass producing and distributing mm -hmm. to them so i can in terms of adoption rate we've had over 60 percent adoption rate wow for nice. this cook stove implant. okay that is good um it's good to hear of the different initiatives that people are taking across africa and the world at large um to ensure that there's conservation of the environment and in it also ensuring that there's a nexus between environment and different sdgs because as you had um it's just not the focus on the environment but also the issue of health and indoor pollution tackled by an innovation taken up by an initiative by the young people to change the community and progressively change the world. Thank you. Eric Njuguna introduces us in a bit and briefly tells us what is climate justice. Climate justice and injustices. I am Hanifa Kut and I am here with Eric Njuguna to discuss justice and injustices in the environmental conservation space. So Eric, how do we ensure that when doing environmental justice, we do not do injustice to the environment and to our communities? Okay, sounds good. Thank you for that amazing question. So first of all, to, to ensure that your climate work doesn't end up being unjust or causing more problems, the first step is understanding the, the issues that made the climate crisis a problem in the first place. Mm -hmm. And that is colonialism, imperialism, racism, and other systemic, systemic uh, methods of oppression that dominate our society today. And uh, 
I, I know I know some of our work, like uh, some of these problems that have resulted from climate works that have ended up being ended up being unjust uh, as a result of not uh, incorporating and understanding the systems of oppression. We've seen like colonial conservation. We've seen like a blaming overpopulation uh, as a result of the climate crisis. We've seen other issues um, that like climate uh, climate gentrification that come up. So I think first of all, um, it's to, as I said, to recognize the historical um, and ongoing systems of oppression in those societies that dominate in our society today, but also in global climate politics. And the second, um, as a result of seeing these injustices brought about by climate works, many BIPOC communities, indigenous communities, and people from the global south have set out a gu- uh, guiding principles, which are called the Bali principles, which uh, are, are, are like principles that you can use to understand these issues and also make sure that all your works incorporate uh, the community because uh, 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 at the end of it, it will boil down to how it relates with the community. And that is why it is important that uh, the community has ours involved uh, from step one because there are so many projects like colonial conservation. We've seen the REDD plus in Tanzania, which has led to communities being affected uh, negatively so i think that is uh, pretty much it and also like even in your work on waste i think not many people even look at waste colonialism kind of issues like uh, countries like the uk uh, sending waste to kenya or other countries in the global south greenpeace has started a campaign called waste minister addressing how uk the countries like the uk uh, send uh, their waste to the global south uh, global south countries so everything boils down to the systems of oppression the dominating our society society today so first step as i said is understanding it and then from understanding it make sure you involve the communities and try to break down the systems of oppression in our daily work so that at the end uh it's climate justice instead of climate injustice because all climate justice works are climate works but not all climate works are climate uh, justice works in fact some climate uh, works create climate injustices thank you okay and finally included will be joseph songo from drc who talks and brings out the aspects of communication and peace building. Um, This is Hanifa. I am here with Joseph. And uh, maybe, Joseph, you can introduce yourself. Thank you, dear Hanifa. I'm Joseph Tsongo. I'm from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm a young social change activist and have a background in communication, uh, try to link uh, peace and environment. Wow, thank you, Joseph. So um, I'd like to know why communication is important when it comes to peace issues and environmental issues. And maybe you can tell me what motivated you to enter into that specific space to deal with peace and to deal with um, environmental issues. Thank you, dear Anifa. Um, I can say that communication is very important in this context uh, regarding uh, peace uh, or environment issues because uh, you need to raise awareness. You need to, 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 to meet or to speak to a large public and you need to to, 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 to speak to them mm-hmm. that's ask you the mean of communication then you can okay. use the radio mm-hmm. you can use television you can use social media you can use what you can and mm-hmm. with a communication style in a communication style mm-hmm. that will allow your uh, those people you want to, to uh, them to, to hear you to, mm-hmm. to get your message okay. and then you can on social media maybe or blog or on a website use a a kind style of maybe storytelling Mm -hmm. so you may you may uh, attract their many people people and their attention Mm -hmm. Um, with local communities in the context of the DRC bar I can say of all the Africa Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. um, uh, infra- infrastructures are not in a good way and mm-hmm. you don't know how to reach to from this community to another one from this village to another one so you can use maybe uh, local radios community radios mm-hmm. yeah to, so your message may reach uh, where you can't you can't reach and that's allow you to engage more people because we want to change and um, the change we need it can't happen if we, 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 we yeah if we don't communicate we we need to, to build it and that's mm-hmm. it's with communication okay thank you so what motivated you to decide to do um communication and activism mainly on the environmental issues and peace issues thank you for that question again i mm-hmm. think that uh, motivate me it's the situation we are living in my community mm-hmm. but not only in my community in the democratic republic of congo I, I think it's an issue in all the all the the entire africa mm-hmm. there is uh effect of climate change that uh-huh. you you may know yeah. um, but insecurity also kills people okay. uh, you know that yeah. so i think that um it's not possible ask people to mm-hmm. protect environment mm-hmm. while they are being killing okay uh, how can people protect environment while they are they, they are having conflict yeah the conflict violent conflict yeah. they, they they are about to kill each other and how how can they protect environment okay. so we need to to, to link Reach those two yeah two, 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 two concept uh, to put them together mm-hmm. uh, to raise awareness for the environment but also mm-hmm. and above all for peace building for living together and that's a, an african issue it's not only the drc's issues yes thank you so much um from this you can actually see that there is an interlinkage in sdgs that are there we bring the aspect of peace we bring the aspect of environment and we bring the aspect of climate change and uh, this are what has motivated joseph to enter into the aspect to the issues of dealing with communication to bring about awareness creation through different means and to see into each that action is done through an informed process thank you it is safe to say that I actually enjoyed the conversation with um, the youth speakers who I had. And if you've gotten to this point, I hope you got to learn a lot from the given conversation. In the late Nelson Mandela's words, it seems impossible until it's done. So you, wherever you are, what are you doing to change the narrative? Always try to do what is good and something that can actually improve your well-being and the well-being of the society. If you have a story that you can actually share in relation to community development and what you're doing on the ground, feel free to reach out. Remember to subscribe for more of this and uh, let's see where this journey takes us and what 2023 has in store. Thank you for being with me and uh, till next time. Bye.